Hello, I'm the White White Guy Show. I'm Marty, and I just muscled through, skipped through Major League Two. Some 19 years and years ago, I just did a review of the film Major League, so time to do Major League Two, I suppose. And by all accounts, Major League um, was a film with Tom Berenger, Charlie Sheen, Wesley Snipes, you know, you, you name it, bunch of bunch of really good actors in this film, and it was a uh, a take on the, the traditional story of the chump sports team with the crazy characters, and then they bring it all together and they win the big game, whatever that is, whatever the sport, whatever the team, league. It's the same thing every time. Very by the numbers kind of film. In Major League, I don't know if they were trying to like, were amazing or just it was kind of like a spoof. I don't know. But it had a certain charm. And, you know, Tom Berenger, um, Charlie Sheen, Wesley Snipes, it was a lot of fun. And as I said before, the film was the film, but it was the, the actors and the chemistry that had, they had that made that movie a lot of fun to watch, or fun-ish. And it was, to my knowledge, a fairly successful film. No big blockbuster, but a memorable film from the very, you know, 1989, but had a kind of early 90s vibe. So in 1994, they made a second one. Which wasn't worth the shit. I mean, it was recycling. It's the same movie. You know, same movie, same bees. So in this one, um, they got Tom Marringer back. Charlie Sheen is back. Uh, the guy who plays Roger Dorn is back. The manager and Dennis Haysbert from Allstate are you in good hands? Um, and but they couldn't get Wesley Snipes, so they replaced him with Omar Epps, who's still playing the same character. And then uh, it's a few years later, and so Tom Berenger's character, for example, was already the older. He played in catchers, and these are no good. So when he comes back in this one, he they, they say, you know, we're not, you're not, we're not bringing him here to be a player. We're bringing him back to be a coach. And then the manager has a heart attack, or is like palpitation, something. So Tom Berenger takes over as the, the manager at one point. And then they bring in a um, uh, free agent. Oh, what's this guy's name? Not that you know who I'm talking about anywhere. Keith David? David Keith? Yeah, David Keith, who looks great as a baseball player. He's got that iconic baseball player look. But he's the hotshot free agent who doesn't like the team and he doesn't like the players. He's make more money than there. He's better than there. And then eventually he gets traded because Roger Dorn takes over as the uh, general manager. He used to be the shortstop. And he's screwing the pooch. He doesn't know how to manage, uh, be a general manager. You're lying on the cord, bro. I got a pit bull on my power cord. Hey, you know. So anyway, um... Wait, real quick. Say hi to, to Rocco. Sup, Rocks. Yeah. Rocco's good people. I like Rocco. I tend to like people, but I like Rocco anyway. So, um, they trade away the hotshot free agent who goes to play for their team, and he becomes that villain player for the other team, just like Dad in the first one. Um, and David Keith, he does a good job. Uh, again, he's just, he's got a great look. You like him as the villain. Um, and he's actually cooler than everybody else in the movie. Um, Dennis Haysbert from the commercials, he comes back and instead of being like a angry, I'm going to kick your ass black guy, he's like too happy for baseball. And then they bring in, it was a, the thing at the time he brought in a Japanese player, very st stereotypical and the Japanese guy and the, the Jamaican voodoo guy are at odds with one another. And the same way in the first one, it was more of a, it wasn't too on the nose, but like a traditional conservative, maybe Christian kind of guy versus the voodoo. Now it's the Japanese dude. So it's all the same puzzle pieces and out with the old white guy who's a Christian and insert him with the Japanese dude who's Buddhist. Um, Charlie Sheen, you know, he was young rock and roll. I'm here to kick some ass. Now he's a business entrepreneur. He's lost his smoke. Um, you know, everybody in that was good. They lost their mojo and they have to find it again. And literally the, the evil owner of the team who hates the team and wants to send the team another sell the team off she comes back and she's like 
and it's a sequel. So she's like, not again. And you're just like, I'm a big Eric Bruscotter guy who played Baker in the TV show Tour Duty, which is about Vietnam War. And they bring him in as a character named Baker. He's the same guy. He's the lovable oaf. And he's a good athlete. He's a good catcher. Batting. Throwing the ball at first and second and all that stuff. Throwing him on at second. Great. But he's got like a mental blockage thing to throw the ball back to the pitcher. Not during a play. Like after the play. Catches the ball. Throws it back to the pitcher. And he's way over here and way over there. So they hand him a Playboy mag to recite. He memorizes the articles, and then he, like, you know, Jessica likes to wear brawn panties, and that helps him get over his uh, mental blocks. And the first time, it was funny. It's clever. And I usually, there's a guy like this from another TV show that I liked. In Angels in the Outfield, it was uh, Neil McDonough, a very young Neil McDonough. I'm a huge fan of guy, and he didn't have a heck of a lot of screen time. <coughs> Eric Bruscutter is at the heart of this thing. He's got a lot of spring, uh, uh, a lot of screen time, which is shocking because he never does. Um, he was in Starship Troopers. He gets killed off right away. He's been in a bunch of stuff, but only briefly. Here he's 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 the heart of the movie. So that's the one thing that, for me personally, makes this not a complete fart in the car, because otherwise it is. It's it's a by the first one was by the numbers. But it had fun with it, so it was tropes, but it had fun with those tropes. This one's just tropes, and it's retired and recycled. Um, it's there's, there's still a little bit of fun in there, just because you like these characters, you like the actors. Um, but like the Japanese guy, I'm just like... <sighs> I know that was a big thing. At the time, baseball was getting into Japan. Their league was getting good. Players were going back and forth. And the phone's ringing on me. No. Oh. Not doing it. Um, so it's it's not a complete waste of time, but it's no great movie. It's a sequel. It's got sequelitis. They really didn't. They had a few things, a few clever things. We'll do this with this guy. We'll do this with that guy. But... Not enough to warn a whole film. This was the first one made a little money. Let's cash in on that. Um, the one other guy worth mentioning at all, just because of who he is, and I need to remember his name because Dementias went into fight. Let me give it down here now. Randy Quaid. Randy Quaid is in this one. And in the first one, the guy who went on to play the janitor in ER is a longshoreman who you see. In the and at the bar chair for the team, Randy Quaid plays the that guy, and he way way the way over the top. And I'm sure the director told him to, but um, that that if it wasn't Randy Quaid, it wouldn't be worth mentioning. It's just it's Randy. Hey, it's Randy Quaid, and which is weird because this is '94 and Randy Quaid had done had been doing stuff since the '80s, been in a bunch of stuff at this point. So for him to have this small peripheral character, I don't know if. The director knew him. They went way back. Or, hey, you want to do a cameo? But, um, so, other than that, he's there. There's nothing more to say about that. He cheers on the team, then he's against the team, and then the team wins him back. So, that's Major League Two. It's got a couple enjoyable things going on, but it's not not enough to warrant him a sequel. So, watch it or don't, if you haven't. Um, if you're still here, thank you for watching the channel, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Damn, they need my numbers because of the workers' comp. Fucking hell. Cheers.